tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon, Bill Bryant and Barbara Bailey for WKYT. As we hit 12:30, there is increased security today on the Eastern Kentucky University campus. It's all because of a threat found in a building on campus last week, promising violence on February 11th. WKYT's Mark Barber is live on campus where things have been quiet so far. It's our top story at 12:30. Mark. Good afternoon, Bill and Barbara. Authorities say they have received several tips about the person who may have written the threatening message, but they say so far nothing has come of those leads. Now, the school at this point is trying to ease the tension on campus. They've greatly increased their police presence, so students across campus are seeing many more of these patrol cars. Now, the threatening message was found nine days ago in the Combs Building. Authorities tell us that it says, and I quote, bringing a gun to here on February 11, dead students. EKU has responded to the threat by dramatically increasing their campus security with officers from several local and state agencies. The scare is keeping many students and teachers away from class and work today. The school isn't penalizing those who don't show up. Instead, they're encouraging students to complete their assignments off campus or online when possible. Campus officials tell us they are planning to beef up their police presence tonight at the Alton Brown Live Performance at the EKU Center for the Arts and the basketball game against Moorhead State University. Uh, but we were at just ask everyone to remain vigilant about their environment, but we ask that all of the time, uh, not just for special events such as what is going on tonight. Authorities say they are still trying to figure out who wrote the threatening message. They are asking anyone with information to contact them using an anonymous tip line that's on their website. We have a link to that form on our website, WKYT.com. Live in Richmond, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thank you, Mark. And you can also call EKU police with tips. Interstate 64 is back open this afternoon following a crash. Two lanes were closed near the 86 mile marker in Lexington while workers patched potholes this morning. Police say a man didn't pay enough attention to the signs to get over and he clipped the side of a truck before slamming into a state highway vehicle. One person in the truck and the driver went to the hospital with minor injuries. Well, you want to take a minute at least to enjoy today's pretty nice weather. Because we have cold and wintry changes. <laughs> Heading our way. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is in the First Alert Weather Center now. Micah? Well, it kind of depends on where you are as of right now to, to depend on what temperature it is. I mean, across 65 in the West, that's where we've seen temperatures already in the 40s. But then you look across our region. Now, it's getting better, uh, but we're still holding on to temperatures there in the 30s. I mean, we're still at 30 degrees in Corbin, but you see the shadow off that sign there on the interstate. Now these clouds are starting to separate. Bright blue skies here in Lexington. Richmond, not so much just yet. You'll start to see that as we go into the next couple of hours. Frame for the 35, seeing those sunny skies too. So it just depends on where you are. Now going in toward the rest of the afternoon and off in toward the evening, well, we'll be right there in the 40s, I think, for most. Now going in toward the evening, it's going to be a chilly one. Clouds will start to appear. And then you'll start to see some snow work its way into the forecast area. Not just for tonight, but Saturday, too. We have two uh, hits of these Arctic fronts, and it's going to be a brutal stretch ahead. That's what we're going to be focusing in on. Not just the snow, but how low we go with those temperatures. Wind chills will be below zero in the upcoming days. I'll show you when that falls coming up. All right, Micah, thank you very much. A man accused of trying to swindle people around the state is back in jail. And this time, investigators in Franklin County have arrested Gary Thompson on a rape charge. WKYT's Victor Puente is tracking the case in a story that's new at 1230. Gary Thompson is most well known for admitting to pretending he has an intellectual disability in order to get money. But now he's been charged with rape, and police say the victim actually has an intellectual disability. They say the rape happened in February of last year and was reported in May. Thompson and the victim knew each other, and police say she invited him to her apartment where he forced himself on her. The indictment says the victim is incapable of consent because they have an intellectual disability. Last February, we reported police had arrested Thompson, charged him with criminal trespassing because he wouldn't leave an apartment. We don't know if that was the apartment belonging to the victim in this case. Police say it's possible Thompson met her while he was pretending that he was also disabled. Getting the word out about, about this gentleman that he's, uh, that he's taking advantage of people that are very vulnerable or of their acts of kindness, I think that's, that's really important, uh, as well as holding him accountable for these charges. 
Thompson hasn't been arrested on these charges yet. He's currently in jail in Meade County, serving time for assaulting a corrections officer in Shelby County. He's also serving time for possession of a forged instrument. That charge is from Barron County. In Frankfort, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, thank you. And Thompson was also indicted on one charge of being a persistent felony offender. We're tracking the investigation into an Eastern Kentucky murder. The shooting happened early this morning at an apartment on J Street in Pikeville. Police say 37 year old James Kevin Pratt was shot in the chest. They arrested 36 year old Robert Atkins at a home on Mount, Ver Mount Martha Drive. He's charged now with murder. A Casey County murder trial will be moved to Pulaski County. William Bobby Rigdon is charged with murder in the 2012 shooting death of William Gleason Piles outside Tartar Gate Company. The Casey County News reports Rigdon's trial will begin March 16th. Another man, David Salyers, is already serving a 20 year sentence after being convicted of complicity to murder in the case last year. The parents of a Kentucky man killed in a highway overpass collapse in Ohio have now filed a lawsuit. Brandon Carl's parents sued the Ohio Department of Transportation on behalf of his estate and his family. They claim the department was negligent and allowed improper and unsafe conditions at the work site in Cincinnati. The suit is asking for damages and more than $11,000 in funeral expenses. An update this afternoon to a WKYT News investigation. Back Back in November, we told you about potentially dangerous guardrails used along Kentucky roadways. The Transportation Cabinet says there are hundreds of these ET plus guardrails, but they don't know where they are. Those guardrails have passed the first of four government mandated crash tests. Kentucky has temporarily banned installation of the guardrails. A group met this morning to try and put a stop to bullying in Kentucky. The Kentucky Youth Bullying Task Force is working to recommend policies and practices for schools. This morning, the panel heard about the adverse effects bullying can have on a child later in life. It can lead to an increased risk of everything from smoking, obesity, drug use, alcoholism, depression, and suicide. You know, sometimes just putting up a poster. That doesn't really get at it. So we need more intensive programs. And uh, we're going to hear some presentations today that will tell us which programs seem to be working in Kentucky. The task force plans to continue meeting monthly. They plan to have a report ready for Governor Bashir in August, and they hope the legislature will take up their recommendations next year. Well, a nap could help you sleep better at night. And should blood donors take supplements? Ebony Williams has details in this Better Living Report. If you're having trouble sleeping at night, a daytime nap might be helpful. French researchers say a 30-minute nap can reverse the hormonal impact of poor sleep, reduce stress, and boost the immune system. A U.S. survey shows about 3 in 10 adults sleep 6 hours or less a night. People who survive strokes are more likely to have trouble sleeping if they're also depressed. Doctors say sleep issues are common after a stroke, but patients with depression seem to have even more difficulty. And a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association finds blood donors who take iron supplements may see their hemoglobin levels return to normal faster. Frequent blood donors typically have lower iron levels. Some can even become anemic. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Ebony Williams, CBS News, New York.